Good evening to you guys out there who are watching this. Um, I am here in my office in Sheraton. Um, there are a few uh, things that, or there's something that came up and RJ wasn't able to come to Sheraton on Tuesday to record like we normally do. Uh, so I went ahead and said, okay, I'll just go ahead and record on Tuesday night so we can get it recorded and, um, and so we are kind of still in Romans tonight. We're going to kind of jump around a little bit in Romans. Um, we're not going to go through Romans 11 tonight like we had thought um, because Paul is kind of getting to the heart of his issue. Um, and I kind of wanted RJ to be able to, you know, have that back and forth conversation with that and be able to point out some things that maybe I wouldn't point out um, that he feels is pretty important through that section. So... Um, I wanted to talk tonight just about peace and um, what that means biblically. Uh, some of the situations we're seeing in the world, um, we need to kind of have an understanding of what exactly peace is, uh, what it means biblically, um, what God promises us um, with peace. So I wanted to kind of go over that. So we're going to go through a few verses in Romans, like we have some of the verses we've already gone through, some of the verses we haven't, and just kind of bring about this idea of peace. Um, so that's the reason why you're, you're seeing me here on the screen and just kind of talking into my computer at this point. I do have the windows open here just for a little airflow and to get a little air in here so I didn't have to turn on the air conditioning. So I apologize for any random noises you might hear from outside and hopefully the wind doesn't pick it up enough to like take anything from that side of the room and <laughs> throw it behind me. So uh, we'll just hope for that. So. I'll go ahead and open us up in prayer, and then we'll start diving into what peace actually is and what it actually means. Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us, and we pray, Lord, um, that you continue to be with us through this day, continue to be with us through the rest of this week. We pray, Lord, um, that you you be with our church family, with those in Bloomfield and those in Sheraton and all the needs there. I pray that you just be in any of the prayers that we have, um, the requests that we have, that you just have your hand on those situations and just continue to show the people in those situations that you're right there with them, walking through this with them. Lord, we pray that you just continue to be in these lessons just continue to open up our hearts and our mind to what it is that you want us to learn from these lessons. And Lord, we just pray that you just continue to, to shape us um, from these lumps of clay that we are and continue to, to make us what it is that you want us to be. And Lord, I just pray for this wholeness, this peace uh, that you promise us and Lord, I just pray that you open up our hearts and our minds to what this lesson uh, tells us and continue to use it with us this week. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to kind of look at um, peace and what peace is. Now, as I said, we're going to kind of focus a little bit on Romans, um, some of the places that it's mentioned in Romans, um, and some of, the, some of the verses we've already gone over, but a few of them we haven't. So, uh, peace itself, and the word peace is actually mentioned 11 times in Romans, um, and I've wanted to point out a few, you know, a few times that it was mentioned and kind of drawn attention to exact what exactly peace means. Um, so peace, from its original form uh, in the Greek, uh, means to join or to tie together into a whole, uh, to bind together that which has been separated. Um, so when we think about peace, it's like when all essential parts are joined together, we have God's gift of wholeness or God's gift of peace. 
um, when we are living as the image bearers we are called created to be we will have wholeness um, so peace in the New Testament is the equivalent of the Old Testament word shalom which I know we've probably heard um, some out of four noise you hear that um, is equivalent to shalom so we've kind of heard that as a, a greeting um, so hello um, but really it kind of means this wholeness and this soundness this health uh, well-being or prosperity um, this is a condition of freedom from disturbance whether outwardly or inwardly. So we have this peace, um, outward peace and inward peace. So setting that all up, I want us to kind of go through, and this is one of the scriptures that we've already gone through. Um, I want us to read Romans 5, 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we are we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Now I read Romans 5, 1 and 2. Um, but it says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and so that there would have been the same equivalent of shalom. Um, so as a hello but it's more of a prayer like a may you be well um, peace isn't just the absence of conflict but the notion of wholeness uh, health and well-being a completeness of heart both physical and relational so Paul's saying there we have peace with God we have wholeness with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have this peace, this wholeness through Jesus. Um, in my uh, systematic theology book written by H. Ray Dunning, he says that peace um, involves the harmony of the individual with himself, with nature, with the world of people and clearly with God. Uh, now, like I said, that's out of my systematic theology book that I had. It's called Grace, Faith, and Holiness. It's a real thick book. If anybody ever wants to borrow it and read it, go on. I'll, I'll loan it to you. Um, anyway, so that's kind of what we're talking about, this wholeness, this wholeness we have with God um, through Jesus. Uh, next, I wanted to bring us to Romans 8, 6, another verse that we have gone through. Um, but I wanted to bring us back to it. The mind governed by the flesh is death, uh, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. And so remember we talked um, a few weeks ago the mind so it really means like the mindset the mindset governed by the flesh is death but the mindset governed by the spirit is life and peace so it's this life and this wholeness um this shalom wholeness a oneness with god nature others and self so that's kind of, once again, what we're talking about, what Paul's talking about here. Um, next, I want us to go to Romans 12. Now, we haven't gotten here yet, but it's one of those um, good verses that I just um, didn't, I wanted to, to take us there for just a little bit. Um, and kind of park there just a, a little bit as we talk about this. Um, so Romans 12, 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. I think that's a verse we need to like speak out right now 
and just think about it for a second. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And that whole, that peace still there is the word that is used for this wholeness. Um, and so, you know, Paul is saying, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So live at peace with nature, live at peace with God, live at peace with other people, and live at peace with yourself. Oh, like we said, that this isn't, this isn't, peace isn't an absence of conflict, but a wholeness. So to be in peace with, with God, with nature, with others, with self, that means so much more than just not being in conflict with. And we'll continue to kind of develop this idea as we, as we go through tonight's lesson. Um, and so I want us to skip forward just a little bit. Um, still in Romans, another scripture that we haven't, we haven't gone over yet. Um, Romans 14, 19. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Mm. I think that's another one of those scriptures that we can just kind of read and kind of, I don't know what term you guys would use, but I'd say marinate on just a little bit, just kind of soak up the words that are really um, written there. Therefore, make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. And so, once again, we're, we're saying, uh, make every effort to do what leads to peace, what leads to wholeness. Um, and Paul says here, and to mutual edification. Um, so we're saying uh, mutual edification. So to build up a person up to be the sustainable dwelling place of God. That is the what the definition is of the word that's used here building a person up to be the suitable dwelling place of God, where God is at home in bringing into a relationship. So, Paul is saying there to make every effort to do what leads to peace, so a wholeness with God, with others, with nature, with ourselves, and to mutual edification. So mutual edification. To build a person up to be the, a suitable dwelling place of God. I don't know about you, but I see a lot of, a lot of hate, a lot of anger out there, and I know we have to, we can't just look at what is going on, we need to look at the reason behind what is going on. Um, But as we look at this, I see, I see so many people drawing lines. Um, this, 
this line in the sand where, you know, this separates me from you. And that's not mutual edification. So the definition today in the dictionary of edification is to instruct, especially so as to encourage intellectual, moral, or spiritual improvement. Now, I'm going to get a little vulnerable here, and um, but and maybe this is me. I try to be very teachable. Um, but it really is a lot of, you know, how you're saying it and what you're saying um, is how people will take it. And I think we need to be careful as Christians what we say and how we say it. Um, because a lot of what we say isn't building other people into a relationship with God isn't instructing them to be in relationship or for spiritual improvement or for moral improvement or intellectual improvement. Um, and I think that's something that needs to change in our culture. I know when, um, when someone kind of tries to come along and understand, try to understand what it is that I'm saying, or why I believe in what I believe, or why I said what I said, um, and someone kind of comes, comes along and tries to understand that, and then maybe tries to direct, um, that is what I define as mutual edification. They are trying to understand and they are trying to teach. They're not just um, degrading and saying, you know, you shouldn't believe that way. This is what we believe. Um, you know, part of being a Christian is, is this mutual edification. Uh, like Paul says here, Make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. So we will learn from others uh, why they're saying what they say or why they're doing what they do. Um, and then it, there's a teaching aspect to that too. And that kind of brings about this peace, this wholeness. So we may land on one side of the issue, but wholeness means that we need to, you know, maybe not agree with this other side of the issue, but at least see it. At least listen to what they're saying. Because wholeness isn't just one side. To be whole means to learn, you know, maybe the reason why someone is saying this or doing this or whatever it is that is on the other side of this, of where we sit. And so mutual edification is this learning where we learn and they can learn. But if we're not if we're not presenting it in a way that other people are going to be um, open to learning, we're not necessarily mutually edifying them. We're not being having this mutual edification that Paul is talking about. And so I think you know not to go. Um, I'm trying not to. I'm trying to stay very unpolitical on this because I I don't feel like you know this is my place to to get political on the Bible study, um, but I did want to to point that point out that there needs to be this mutual edification. 
there needs to be this um this learning and maybe not agreeing with what uh, they say, but at least understanding what they are saying. Uh, kind of like, you know, I, we, I've said it a few times and I know RJ has talked about it as well, um, but there's sometimes this, we listen to respond and we, we don't listen because all we're doing is listening to respond and we're not truly listening to what it is that they're saying. And so I think as Christians, it's mutual edification um, to bring, build a person up into the suitable dwelling place of God, where God is at home, and to bring into relationship this mutual edification we can't listen just to respond. We've got to listen to understand. And maybe that will, I mean, a lot of things, that's not going to change our mind. But we still need to listen to understand and not just to respond. That's where the mutual edification comes from. So, um... On that, I want us to uh, talk about, you know, this, this, do whatever it leads to peace and to mutual edification. Um, and so when I thought about that, I thought about that um, scripture. I thought about um, that in Matthew, um, where Jesus is on this, you know, the Sermon on the Mount. Um, so in chapter 5, and Jesus says in five, um, chapter 5 in Matthew, in verse 9, he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Um, and so it says there, you know, the peacemakers, so that's like um, just a different version of peace of the word peace that we've talked about um but it was like to build up peace um so it's blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of god so to bring about peace um so the biblical definition of that where it says peacemaker um it is read um pacific or loving peace, or a peacemaker. Um, when I say Pacific, I'm not talking about the ocean, <laughs> and I'm not talking about um, mispronouncing specific. I am talking about specific. Um, and so the definition to, or I mean, I'm talking about Pacific, sorry. <laughs> the definition of that is tending to make or preserve peace, not more like they're peaceable, mild, calm, tranquil. And so I kind of want us to take a moment to kind of self-reflect on that. Um, kind of these last couple verses make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Uh, there in Romans 14, 19, and then in Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And I want us to think for a moment. If we are considered peacemakers, if we would consider ourselves peacemakers, do, do we do everything to make every effort we can to lead to peace and to mutual edification? And I think that's the heart of of this whole of this whole lesson is to bring us around to that thought 
There's a lot of unrest in the world today, and we as Christians are called to make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification, and we're called to be peacemakers. To make or preserve peace, to be mild, to be calm, Because it says there, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And that takes us back to the idea we kind of talked about um, in Romans 15, um, where we talked about, uh, in uh, let me get back there, uh, or in Romans 8, 15. There we go. That's what I was going for. So Romans 8, 15. Um, where he said, the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption into sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. And we talked about um, a few weeks ago when RJ and I did this, uh, this lesson. We talked about how our actions are the visible part of our obedience to the spirit. Um, so it's our actions that show who our Father is. Uh, people will know we are children of God, that we have been adopted in, because we tend to act like our Heavenly Father. So how do we act like our Heavenly Father? And Jesus answers that. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God to bring about peace to bring about this idea of wholeness to help build each other up to bring about wholeness to bring about this whole relationship with God like I said peace isn't just you know, an absence of conflict. This is, peace is this relationship that we have with God, this wholeness of relationship we have with God. Peace is this wholeness of relationship we have with other people. Peace is this wholeness we have in, in regards to nature, in regards to ourselves even. And peace and this wholeness is this love relationship we have. I wanted to bring up um, this quote from William Greathouse in his book, Wholeness in Christ. It's an awesome book if you uh, ever wanted to read that. It's, it really is a good one. Um, William Greathouse, of course, was one of our general superintendents. Um, and so I read this book quite a while ago, and it was just kind of a really awesome, eye-opening uh, book to read. Um, and Greathouse has a section that he talks about um, the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes. Um, so they're, you know, in... in uh, Matthew 5, when he has a Sermon on the Mount, and he said, blessed are, he gives this list, uh, so the Beatitudes, and, okay, so, we're back again, um, I don't know where you guys went, I was here the whole time, I finished the whole Bible study, but, so, apparently, at some point, my computer stopped recording, so, um, but, so I guess I'll just start out, start with about the place that it stopped. Um, so sorry if my thought pattern kind of got switched off there. Um, we'll work towards getting it back to where I was going with this. Um, so this quote by Greathouse. So um, Greathouse says in his book, um, Consequently, we must take the term peacemakers literally 
is the active endeavor to effect reconciliation between opposing parties rather than merely patiently enduring in a posture of non-resistance. And he goes on to quote um, Gulich, who said, uh, the peacemakers of 5-9, so he's talking about um, those that Jesus is talking about in the Beatitude, um, Matthew 5-9. Um, so the peacemakers of 5-9 refers to those who experience the shalom of God, and we've already talked about that shalom, that peace of God, um, become his agents, establishing his peace in the world. And so Grace House is saying, like, um, we must take the term peacemakers literally, uh, that we must be active in bringing about reconciliation between opposing parties uh, rather than sitting back and just going, well, I'm not on either side. I'm just going to sit this one out. And I don't know about you guys. I don't like conflict. I don't like being part of conflict. I don't like um, really getting in the middle of conflict and trying to bring about um reconciliation between two people I just I would rather stay away from conflict as, as far as I can go um, but that's not what God has called us to he has called us to be to be peacemakers um, to do everything that we can and make every effort to what leads to peace and mutual edification so it says what leads to peace and edifying um, so edifying, you know, like we said, to instruct, especially so as to encourage intellectual, moral, or spiritual improvement. Um, so to edify, we are called to be peacemakers and to make every effort to lead to peace and to edify. Um, and for this mutual edification, too. I know I've talked about it before, and RJ's talked about it, that we can't just listen to respond. Uh, we need to listen to listen, and that's part of that mutual edification, is listening to listen to someone, not to just have an answer. Um, so, um, going on... Um, I want to bring up the story, and it's one of one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Um, and I've I'm given a sermon on, over it uh, here in Sheraton, um, but it's the woman with the bleeding condition, the woman who's had a bleeding condition for 12 years. And in my sermon, I kind of went through this: what healing, um, how God used the word healing, or Jesus used the word healing in these different. Um, ways in the passages leading up toward the end of the story. And so I want to bring us to Mark 5 and verse 34, um, where Jesus responds back to the woman with the bleeding condition who had touched the edge of his cloak, um, who had gotten healing. Uh, he said in Mark 5 verse 34, he said, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. She had this wholeness. He had given her healing, not only the physical healing, um, but the spiritual healing, the emotional healing. Um, there was a lot of healing that took place that in, in that passage, in that story in Scripture, and so he says, go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Um, that peace was like that wholeness. Um, and if we look back on, you know, what we've talked about uh, before uh, in this lesson, um, this wholeness, so when all the essential parts are joined together. Um, so she's had this wholeness, this reconciliation, this healing. And so that all brings about this peace that that's the peace that she has um real quick i want us to um read uh john and john um 
16, verse 33. And so Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Like I said, peace isn't necessarily the absence of conflict. And as Greyhouse said, we can't just ignore conflict and be at peace uh, or pe be peacemakers. Um, peace is a wholeness. Uh, peace, being peacemakers, is to bring about this wholeness and to help others come into relationship and to have this wholeness. And um, when we talk about bringing peace and and edifying each other, it's bringing them into relationship and and making sure that our speech. What we say, what we do, our actions, our speech, um, is bringing peace and is bringing edification. Um, that we are truly acting like children of God. Um, showing those actions, uh, you know, like we talked about in Romans 8. 15, uh, the outward actions, um, our outward speech, uh, we should act that way because we tend to act like our Heavenly Father. Um, so in, in wrapping this up, I want to um, share with you guys two quotes, um, both of them from this uh, dialogue series. Um, uh, one of them from the facilitator's guide and one of them um, from uh, the participant's guide. And uh, there's two authors listed, so I'm not really sure who had written this quote, but um, in the, in the um, participant guides, it says, Although we may not be able to make perfect peace evidence um, evident on this war-torn earth, we, as the church, Big C Church, uh, can nevertheless plow and prepare places for God to make true peace and plant it through his kingdom reign. Um, and so it's saying there, although we may not be able to make perfect peace, we can prepare places for God to make true peace, peace and plant it through his kingdom reign. And so um, that's why we have to do all that we can uh, to bring peace, um, to have that calmness about us. Because um, people, people will watch what we do. Um, we've got to have that. Um, I also wanted to bring up um, the prayer for peace. Um, in this, I had it, I had it, uh, but then I shut my book because I thought I was done. <laughs> um, little did I know it stopped recording. So I wanted to bring up the prayer for peace, um, by St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, and I'm going to read this line by line, and I'm going to pause in between the lines, uh, just so that we can kind of, um, as I said, I, I tend to say marinate in what is said or what I read, um, but you use whatever word that you want to there. Um, but I want us, I'm going to pause between each line so that we can kind of think about what it is that is being said in this prayer. Um, like I said, this is the Prayer of Peace by St. Francis of Assisi. It says, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, 
faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I want you guys to really um, kind of reflect on that prayer. Um, go back through, rewatch that section of it, and just really think about what's being said there. Um, I pray that God really opens up our eyes to um, this lesson. Uh, I don't know if you guys needed this lesson, but I sure needed this lesson um, this week. And God's really been working on me um, these last couple days. And, and so when it kind of came down to this, you know, where I would have to uh, teach a lesson uh, here uh, tonight by myself. I really, this was the first thing that kind of came to mind and where God wanted me to go. So I hope that it, it brings enough, you know, that it brings knowledge your way. Um, as much as it's, it's kind of been working on me um, these last few days. So I pray that God uses us in our time together. And um, like I said, I want you to, to really think about that kind of challenge question. Um, are we being peacemakers? Are the things that we are saying edifying? Um, are the things that we're saying helping to bring people into relationship with God? Because if we're saying things and it's not helping um, other people grow in their relationship with God. Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? Are we bringing peace? So um, those are kind of my challenge thoughts or questions for you guys and um, really myself as well. Um, so don't think I'm just trying to direct this. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pray and close this out real quick. And uh, next week, you know, RJ will probably be back and we'll be in um, Romans 11. I think that's where we, we were heading. Um, we were going to head this week. Um, so go ahead and read through there. And if there's anything there in Romans 11 um, that you have a question over, um, go ahead and get a hold of RJ or I. And we'll deal with those questions next week when we kind of go over that chapter. So if there's anything that you, that you have a question about, um, go ahead and get a hold of us and let us know what those questions are. And we will... I will do my best to try to answer those questions. Um, kind of gives me a little bit of a, a feedback on what it is that you guys want to learn out of this too. So um, anyway, uh, read through chapter Romans chapter 11. We'll be going there um, next week. Uh, RJ and I will probably be back together um, filming in Sheraton um, next week on Tuesday. And then you guys will see it Wednesday. Uh, your Thursday. So anyway, I'll go ahead and pray us or close us in prayer, not pray us out of here, but close us in prayer. Okay. Dear Lord, we just pray 
that, as this prayer said, that we can be made instruments of your peace. Lord, help us to be peacemakers. And if there's places in our lives where we don't have peace, where we don't have this wholeness, if there's parts of our relationship with you or with nature or with others or with ourselves, that there needs to be this wholeness, that there needs to be the peace, that you will point that out to us. And Lord, then we can just lay that at your feet and you can bring help bring healing and restoration and wholeness to that. Lord, I pray that, again, as this prayer said, that we may seek not so much as to be consoled, but to console. That we may seek not so much to being understood, but to understand. And that we may seek not so much as to be loved, but to love. Lord, help us in our understanding of what you say about peace, what peace means biblically. Lord, I pray that you continue to work on our hearts and our minds this week through this lesson. Lord, I pray that you just continue to show yourself through this and show us what it is that we need to work on in our daily lives to be peacemakers, to edify. Lord, I just thank you for this time you give us together. I pray that you just continue to be with us this week. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you guys next week.